Oh no 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 no! I'm a spoon! 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 I'm a flipping spoon! What did I? Please tell me it didn't work. Please tell me it didn't work. Delete the canisters. Delete the canisters. Delete the canisters. Delete the canisters. I sent the train to the wrong bloody stick. <gasps> no! 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 What's going on, guys? And welcome to another satisfactory video. Where today. We're going to be playing with, yes, more trains. And of course, we're going to be utilizing the highway because why the hell not? So if you remember, we actually built this a few episodes back for the sole purpose to bottle the water, which then gets transported on a train, which then moves along the highway, which then unloads at the aluminium factory and then gets unpackaged here, where it then goes into the pipes, into the buffers and then into the machines. And then the empty packages go back up to the train line, gets loaded onto a train, and then goes back across the highway, and then gets unloaded back at the water plant, which then goes back into the packages to make more water bottles. And then that completes the whole cycle back over again, which means we don't need to keep making canisters because they're being recycled and being reused over and over and over again. But because this is working so well, I want to make it bigger and a lot more functional. So with this big open space here, with of course plenty of water, Water, I want to make a bigger water plant, but I do have to be careful because it is near a death zone And then I want that water plant to supply the whole map when needed of course But not only that I want to utilize this location here for quartz and I don't just mean these ones I also mean the ones in this spooky cave where there's a lot of scary cats But I also want to grab these ones from the Titan forest, which is one two three four five six nodes right here Stick them on a train line around here, connect it up to this corner of the highway, move it through the canyon, where we will divert the train off the rail here into another station to pick up these quartz, and yes, the ones from the spooky cave as well, <laughs> to the rocky desert into its own quartz facility, which will be supplied with water by the new water plant. And then with all that being sent to one location, the water and the quartz, yes, if you guessed it, we're going to make the pure quartz crystal, which is going to be 67.5 quartz per plus the 37 0.5 water will equal 52.5 quartz crystals per minute. But with both of them buildings, I'm going to break it up into two pieces. Technically, that building does not need to be there because that was probably for another science or planning kind of thing. <laughs> but I'm going to break that uh, into two uh, videos, which will be two episodes, one for the new water plant, and then the other will be into the quartz facility. So the first job today is I want to start working on the water plant, but then I've just realized as well, we need to make the transition easy for them trains over there to send water to the aluminium plant because we don't really want to shut down the plant that we have over there. So what I need to do is I kind of need to, well, basically build what we have and then start diverting the trains, the, well, the multiple trains we have over there, one by one, but making sure that we pull out all of the water canisters from over there and divert them here before they get turned into water bottles. And then when the water bottles is empty there, we then need to make sure, well, that is all clear and I can shut it down and then remove that whole bottom section. Oh, bloody hell, that was a mouthful. I'm not going to lie. So first thing is, 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 is to start, well, placing the foundation. But also we do need to create a new on and off ramp for the highway for the trains. And I'm just wondering if they just keep it to the grid of the highway and just maybe for now is just grab ourselves a foundation and then just go broop, all the way down to the water level and see where that is and then delete the ones that are above the water level. And hopefully, yeah, we're just, we're kind of inside. So might, we might utilize that as a little bit of a feature within the building that we're going to produce here. And if we bring this up, by one meter. Oh, that's a little bit more than one meter. That's two meters there, Bitty Bob. So there, then that's a good height for our foundation. But just for design purposes, we could technically just go with something on the lines of the, on the side like this, where we might want to put our pipes in case they want to be water cooled. And there we go. Just like that, we've now got the foundation, a couple of rails and three stations in place. And the reason I've got three is, well, one is we've got two over there, one for outbound water and one for inbound empty canisters. And that's going to be exactly what these two are. This is going to be outbound water. This one is going to be inbound canisters. 
But this one on the end is a little different because this one is going to go eventually to the quartz facility in the rocky desert that we explained earlier. Um, but the thing we're going to do with this one is we're going to utilize one train for outbound water and in, well, outbound water and inbound empty canisters. Does that make sense? So all these are going in the wrong way right now. But we'll change all that in there. I just wanted to use this for measurement so I can keep everything organized, nice and tidy. We've six stations on either side with the possible of seven. Well, technically not, because this one is going to be for the empty, uh, the empty, the, uh, what's it called? The, the, the chew, th chew thing, the locomotive. That's it. <laughs> Because we've got the locomotive at the front, and as you know, the rule of thumb for trains is for every four um, containers, you're going to need uh, one locomotive. So because we've got six uh, containers, we're going to have uh, an additional locomotive on the back, so we can keep the speeds optimal when going up and down, well, up hills mainly. Uh, so now, I kind of love this rain. I love the rain. I wonder what, because update eight is coming, and tomorrow, as of this video releasing, which should be... On the 23rd of March, on the 24th, which is a Friday tomorrow, we should have some update 8 information. So I will let you know about that in the next video. Um, and But make sure you keep an eye on the Coffee Stain channel for that as well. Or in the Discord. Because we do post about the updates in Discord. Or the live streams. Links are in the description. But if you are enjoying these videos, please remember to like, subscribe, and also leave a comment, even if it's just a bloody emoji. You know how we do it on this channel by now. But for those that don't know, you might have seen a couple of changes to the YouTube channel. We've had a little bit of a change around. This channel that you're watching this on is all based on automation games, uh, factory games, uh, city building games, simulation building, survival games. My new channel, which you've not seen before, is going to be for Let's Play. So if you're interested in like The Last of Us, Resident Evil games, anything that you could just sit down and binge, that's the place to be. So if you're interested in that sort of stuff, go over there, give it a click and subscribe. And then yes, the VOD channel is back up and running again. But unfortunately for those that are waiting for the VOD channels from the live streams, they've gone. <laughs> I'm sorry, they've gone. Um, it's my error, but also YouTube's error. So I apologize for this. But what I'm going to do in the future is every time I finish a live stream, uh, they will be going up there straight after no matter even if it's just satisfactory as well where before whenever i was releasing one of these videos on the main channel i was releasing the vod on the vod channel where now they're just gonna get thrown up after i finish the live stream they're gonna get thrown up there and not when the video releases so i apologize for those that are missing a few episodes uh hopefully you can catch up maybe i'll do it on a world tour to help you maybe but if you're gonna question please let me know so back to the video at hand. So now what we want to do is I want to utilize one of my engine designs. Uh, and we're definitely going to do that within this part here. So if we think about it, we're using Mark V lines now, because yes, we're using aluminium stuff. Uh, and we want to fill six of these up. So if we pull out a quick, uh, where is it? Packager, put that down. Uh, and we look at bottled water, that is sending out 60 bottled water per minute. And if we do 780, which is a Mark V line, divide uh, divide that by 60, that is going to be 13 water extractors. So 13 of these in a line with two pipes, technically, right? Because we'll need a Mark II pipe, which holds 600, and then a 60, 120, and then a 180, and then a Mark I pipe with 180 water in it, to capitalize on that machine. Is that right? That's right, isn't it? So let me just do this for visual sake. So 780, the uh, minus 600, which is a Mark II pipe full, which is going to leave us with 180 water needed. So yeah, we'll use a Mark I pipe with 180 water in there to fill the last three, because yeah, I'm a spoon sometimes. Ignore me. Ignore me. I don't know why I'm running over here for like cinematic effect or something. I'd, I've got to go back here now. <laughs> I'm like one of them bloody vloggers and just go back over here and pick my camera up. <laughs> so before we can even place down the th uh, the uh, water packages, we need to extend the foundation on. And then hopefully it's not within the kill bounds. Please. I hope to God. <laughs> and then we just need to start putting down the packages, which we just need to put 13 in a row, right? So if we got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. I think that's 13. Is it? Bada bing, bada bosh, it is. So 13 um, packages, and then obviously we're going to need two water pumps on either side. Well, water pumps, I say, I, um, I mean uh, pipes. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to quickly grab a pipeline support. I'm going to put this uh, there, bring it up by two, then grab ourselves a Mark II pipe. Let me make sure, though, that I am making sure that my pipes are blue. So when I build them, they will be blue and not purple because obviously last time I was doing heavy oil residue. Uh, so we need to do 10 machines. So if we just bring this down about halfway at the minute, so let's just take it to about there. And then we'll go to the end and make sure there's three not covered by this pipe because this pipe can only hold up to 10 because obviously 10 times 60 is 600, which is a Mark II pipe. And then we're just going to grab ourselves a pipeline junction and put that up there, hold control, and just spam every time it locks into place because it's just a lot easier, you know? And obviously go along and check it. And then once I've got these done, we just need to get another pipe like this, bring that up by two, grab ourselves a Mark I, because we only need 180 water in this one, line it up to this one here, pull that up, pull that across, and we should be able to take this right to the end here, just like this, then grab ourselves a junction again, uh, like the grab, hello, bits, there you go, and then connect that up to this one, which should be 60, 120, 180 water, just like that. And then we just need to grab the pipes and take them to the machines like this. And when do these close? Some people always ask, how do I put all these down super quick? When it, when it's like usually this close, just aim at the machine and just double click. You don't need to bring it to here. Just double click at the machine. And then you can just run along and just do that. It's so much easier and you kind of get the rhythm of it at the end of the day. And then we, when we've got them, we do need to get the the splitter. Well, I don't want to go smart splitter. Uh, splitter. And we're going to put that down here. I'm just going to take that all the way along and just... This is where the empty canisters will be going. That's wrong. This is where the empty canisters will go. And then we can just uh, move on and start putting down the water extractors. And then just connect all the belts once you put all them down like this. And then go back along because more than likely right now, somebody is already heading to the comments. I guarantee it. About bits, you put a leg inside the belt. <laughs> so let me remove that. And now that's that done. Um... We just need to do the inside, which we're just going to get a Mark 1, fly straight over, and like I said, just aim at the bottom machine, double click, double click, just like that. Oh, I'll say that as soon as I mess up. Typical me. I can't even do it now. Okay, ignore me. <laughs> ignore me. I know how to do this. I'm just going a little too fast. <laughs> and then on this side, obviously, we're just going to need the merges all down the front, just like this, because if we've got, um, what, 13? That's going to be 780 bottles of water, which then means before you put them down, we can actually put this down here and then put our other water extractor, well, we'll put other packager down, line that up here because now we know the distance we need because this is the only half of it. And then we just need to do this other half by just adding the rest of them and doing exactly the same thing we've just done on this side, but in, well, flip to reverse, basically. So we've got to put the pipes on that side. And then we're going to get the merges underneath there. And then we're just going to pull all these merges down here with a Mark V belt in with a Mark I belt coming out. Well, it doesn't really matter what belt you have coming out. It's just personal preference for me why I have Mark I's coming out. And then you'll get something like this. This is something I prepared early. <laughs> That's what all the cooking shows say, right? Um, but yeah, just focus on the bottom layer right now because that the top layer is just an exact duplicate of the bottom. Uh, so, like I said, we put 13 on either side, we put the merges on the middle, then we put the splitters on the outside, which is going to be for the empty packages, and then the water down here with 3 going into a Mark 1 line, and then 10 going into a Mark 2 line. And it's exactly the same with what's upstairs. And the only reason I've done that is because, well, 1, we need, what, 6? Um, six lines, if we just go over here, 6 lines of water to come in, so 1, 2, 3, 4, that, that's 5 bits. That's five. Oh yeah, that's four. <laughs> so that's four here. And then we're going to do another one just at the side here. You probably just noticed as well, I have put the water extractors in. I'm going to show you a nice little trick here in a minute, uh, which I've talked about in a previous video, which some of you might not have seen, but I'll tell you it in this one. Uh, but I've overclocked uh, this one because this is the single pipe, which is going to go to the three machines. Uh, and all that's doing is just, I've just overclocked this 300. I don't need to. I only need 180 water, but I'm going to do 300 just for the sake of it. Uh, and then these two are overclocks of 300 as well, which are merged together and then going over here, which will then get pumped up. Oh, well, it won't get pumped up because it's going up into this level. But the top layer will eventually go into three more and that will get a pump on there, which will feed the top ones. 
And then it's just duplicate over here. That's why I never short the full build, like, straight off the start, because technically you only want to focus on half of it, because the other side is just a duplicate, right? That's why I only explain one every time, because if you know me by now, you know every everything that is doubled is just basically a duplicate of one side of the build. And then on the front side here, I've just got where the merges are here. I've just got this coming to a lift here, which comes down and creates... Uh, literally, well, four separate outputs. So this is outputs here, and then these two are inputs for the empty canisters, and then these two are empty canisters as well. Exactly like I said, this half is a duplicate of this half. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. Never look at the whole picture, look at half of it. So then these four will eventually go into this section here, and then we just need to add one more. So all I'm gonna do, hello? excuse me uh i'm just gonna put down 13 more water extractors here uh, but i want to show you something real quick because sometimes a lot of these are fighting uh how to place these down and normally if you place it on water it moves freely like this and you're trying to line it up to the center of the grid so you kind of move it over you put this down here you might go over a little bit too far you go down to put a pipe like this and you move over and you find out your pipe's a little wonky the best way to do this is get a foundation under the water, build it under the water, just like this, grab yourself the water extractor, place it down, and you'll notice now it will start snapping because it's technically aligning with the foundation underneath it. So you can place that directly in the middle and it will line up directly with this line right here, just like that, to keep your factories a lot cleaner. And then once I've done this, all I need to do is add three more water extractors here, send them up onto the top floor, get that all powered, and then bring the power over from the power station, because as you know, power actually runs through the power line, so you can just output the power from literally right there, like that. And this will have, should have power. It doesn't, because I've not technically connected the power line up to the actual thing yet, have I? No. But as you can see, I have been working on the on and off ramp right here, I didn't want to obviously remove that one for now because that means the the plantation over there will not receive the water it needs because like i said before we need to make sure the transition is nice and ready so what we've got here is we've got the inbound line so the trains are going to come from, from down this side like you know choo choo come around here and then they're going to come up to this and they're going to do a right like this and then turn in to where they need to go. But you must be wondering how our train's gonna get around this, and this is where path signals are gonna get involved, because path signals, a lot of you seem to get confused by them, but all they really are is, I'm gonna just remove these real quick and show you how simple path signals are. So we have three ways of getting into this junction. We have the left, which is a track down here, and a track uh, coming inbound this way, same for that side. A, tra a train goes on the left down there and then comes into this junction here. And then it's the same with this side. Yes, I am doing left-handed drivers, so sorry to you right-hand drivers. <laughs> just whatever you've learned in life, just flip it. So, <laughs> so then the train's coming down here and then the outbound train's going here. On every inbound line to this junction, right? So inbound, inbound, and inbound. We just get ourselves a path signal. So go into your trains get a path signal, place this down just before the corner. So we're just going to place that just there, right? So path signal just before that one. The next one, you go to this two lane here, go to your inbound to the junction and put one on that one. And then the same over here. You go to this line of inbound uh, rails and you put one down there. Next thing you need to do is you need to get a block signal. And then on the outbound of this junction of the inbound line, so the train's coming down this line, it reads the path signal. And then the first one down here, for example, here, is you put down, right? Same with this one. This is a path signal. And on the outbound of the turn, you put a block signal like that. And then you go over here. You go onto this one. No, sorry, it's this one over here now, isn't it? Ignore that, that's clipping, we're gonna fix it. Inbound, it turns along this line here, just like this. Da, 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 da. And then first snap, block signal. Now you see the puff signals are all working, just ignore that, it's clipping. All you need to do, I just need to push that block signal back there. Same with that one. I'll just push it a little bit further back. 
which will stop this clipping because that is a horrendous and no <laughs> just no uh, and that is it that is how path signals work they're super 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 easy it's just that a lot of people get confused with them because they use them as block signals by placing them down on the opposite side again so like i said every inbound to the junction put a path signal so this is an inbound put a put a path signal on the outbound of the same line to the junction so this is the outbound of this junction put a block signal that is it make sure that is on every inbound line to that junction that is it that's it's super super simple and then what will happen is is if a train is coming down here now and it's going to do a left here it's going to do a left it's entering this block so if i just get a signal so you can see you can kind of see the, oh this doesn't help out that's okay never mind this this is orange right so this is a block right here so when this train comes down here and enters this one but wants to go this way the train coming down there from that blue line is going to register that this train that i'm on here is going left and is not going to conflict here along this line so that train will not have a collision so that path signal will say a up yes a up <laughs> i'm coming this way so make sure you don't pass through that line that's basically how it works right the next thing i want to look at start doing is starting to well work on this little intersection here so we're gonna run to the top of this and then just make sure this is level and then we're just gonna build this out by say five one two three four five and then just kind of just turn it in just like this like that and what I really want to do is start looking at, now I've got everything like being sorted out over there, everything's up and running, we have power, I've connected it all up and all that kind of stuff. I want to now start slowly converting the trains that are heading in this direction, well, all the trains you see heading in this direction, to start going over there. But I want to leave at least one blue train, and the reason they're blue is because they're carrying water, and these are silver because they're carrying empty canisters. So I want to make sure at least one blue train is running over to that location, because that means that they're going to be sending water bottles. And eventually, that will starve all the water bottles and canisters out from over there, because the empty canisters are initially going to get dropped off here. So, I've already connected this side up, as you can see. So I'll get one of these trains and it's just going to divert down here. But I want to set the loop up to make sure it goes back. So make sure I can cross here. Excuse me, coming through. And then what I want to do is I want to grab the uh, the railway down here, the actual track itself. I've only got 300 fuel left. Quickly grab that and then just build this up here. And I'm going to show you how I normally keep it nice and clean, especially coming to the top or at the bottom. So once at the top, I always go and place that one foundation apart from the top and then I grab it from there and then take it to the half block here. Uh, so halfway through that top block. And I do that the same for going down. So I always go for half here and then go down a block there. This, oh, this, <laughs> this thing creates, no, the train does not clip through the, uh, the foundation. Uh, and then what I want to do is I really want to grab the... I want to make this symmetrical. So where is that connected to? So it's there. So I want to create a new snap point. So all I'm going to do is just delete that track there. Pull that to literally up to this line because that's where the other snap point is. Delete that and place that there. And then I want to make this symmetrical as well how can i make this so it's a lot easier for me to play around with i think the best thing to for me to do is just quickly do this grab you and then place you and aim at the center of that block like that and then place you in there that should do that like that i'm just going to do this the same here i want to make sure that these are the same and set up correctly so grab you bring you into here was it this one I can't, wait, where was it? Hello? No, I went up further one there, didn't I? It's... Let's remove that one. It's technically this block. They're different foundations, so let me... Uh, let me use the other foundation. That's why I'm confusing myself. There we go. The skin is wrong. So now I grab that, place that there, place that there. Now both sides are identical. And now it's just a matter of me fixing these. And all I'm going to do for that is just I'm going to remove this, grab myself some foundations... And I want to go with the upside down, well, inverted up corner. I'm just going to place these like this in them gaps there to create that little little connection there. And I can just remove that one and then duplicate that there. Just kind of creates a little bit of a 
what's it called? And if I have to, I'll just kind of play around with this to make sure the track actually fits in there so I can continue these railings going on here because obviously this railing is only going to be able to go up to there before the train starts clipping through it. But uh, now that we've got that connected up, all I really need to do now is find myself a victim. So I need a, I need a train, preferably a silver one. Uh, and I need to name these trains down here so I know where to send the trains. And funnily enough, <laughs> the path signals I did <laughs> have gone um, because I was doing something and I didn't put them back before I come to this clip. So that path signal, keep them where I told you to do them. I just need to put them back again because I was sciencing something here. But yeah, I'll put them back. Don't worry. So I'm going to call this one aluminium canisters, just like that. And then I'm going to go to this one, and I'm just going to call this one uh, aluminium <laughs> uh, water bottles, right? Water bootles? Water, water bottle. What? I was call it water bottle. What? What? All right. I can already see the comments. What a bottle. <laughs> I don't know why I did an accent on it. Because I have an accent. Water bottle. <laughs> Water bottle. Okay. There's teas in there. Now that I've got them, I, like I said, I need a victim. Uh, and preferably one that's not already past that junction right there. So I need to go further along here and find one. Hold it. There must be one coming at some point, right? I've been, I've been stood there for about five minutes. Hello? Is there one around here? Hello? Hello? I see one. Very low polygon count, but I see one way over there. Right there. It's about to come around the corner. There it is. Okay. Let's try and catch up to it a little bit because I don't want to. I want to quickly turn off self dr automation drive thing, you know, that thing. Just like that. And then edit timetable, I want to remove that, remove that, and then I want it to go to uh, canisters, and then to Melonia water, save changes, turn on self-drive. <gasps> oh, got it turned just in time. Oh boy. Oh boy. Okay, so it should now go here. Let's put, let's put the UI off there, because, uh, you know, for those that don't know, you can press P. Winter photo mode. For those that don't know, I don't know if you knew that, but some so, some of you definitely don't. I know that for a fact. So then, this should now pick up the canisters. Should, right? It should pick up the canisters. Should drop off the canisters, I should say. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Um, I did set this to unload. God damn it. Okay, so now I've done that, I've got to wait for this train to now do a full loop to come back around to make sure it unloads to get that whole system up and running. So I tell you what, enjoy the music. <laughs> Oh, no, 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 no. I'm a spoon. 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 I'm a flipping spoon. What did I? Please tell me it didn't work. Please tell me it didn't work. Delete the canisters. Delete the canisters. Delete the canisters. Delete the canisters. I sent the train to the wrong bloody state. <gasps> No, 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 
I sent the canisters to the wrong bloody station, which means the canisters have not. <laughs> Okay, so I, I fixed it. I've done the trains. It took me a little bit to get everything kind of sorted. And I wanted to do something nice for you and do a little time lapse of the train going across. And then, yeah, only to find out I messed them lines up. It didn't take me too long to fix that. I only had to remove a couple of lines and then replace the lines. But as you can see, I have now got the empty canisters going in the right direction over here to the water extractors. They're producing the bottles. The bottles are then going in here, which are then being sent over to the aluminium plant. And like I said, I have left a train that does go over there and still collect the water to actually remove the bottles and the canisters. <sighs> so, so you can also see I've also put the signals back here as well. And I didn't need to put them on this side because it was just showing it, for example. But here comes one of the trains. And every time there is a pass signal, the train will slow down eventually um, when it comes to a pass signal junction because the game has to kind of go, hey, up, is there something that's going to cross this path? You know? Hey, up. <laughs> but I've also, because these trains are the length they are, and technically I should, because I did tell you earlier, I should really put a locomotive on the end of this and put it that way to gain a little bit more speed going up these hills. It's not going to lose too much, but it's just my little rule of thumb, you know. And then with this end station, that is going to go to the quartz facility, which I have already started, but that's going to be for another video. So make sure you to check out my other content right here. Remember to like, subscribe, and also leave a comment. And uh, make sure you to check out my other channels because the second channel will be kicking off with daily content. So as always, enjoy the rest of your week or weekend or day or evening, and I will see you in another video. So keep smiling, and I'll see you then.